Hi everyone, today's movie is Without a Paddle. I'll admit I've seen it before, but it was on TV so I thought I'd review it. Um, it's actually pretty old now. It came out in 2004, so about 12 years. Uh, it's a really silly movie. A lot of people know of it, but um, it's one of those movies where when it's on TV you just watch it. Um, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's, you know, just silly enough. It's a little bit ridiculous at times, but, you know, it, sometimes you just need that type of movie. Um, so yeah, I, I think that there's really not that much to say about it. It's not that deep, you know, it doesn't have that interesting of a plot. Um, but it's just one of those things that you enjoy having on in the background. So it starts off with these four kids and they're real, you know, they're best friends. Uh, they're real into the case of D.B. Cooper, which I think is why it was on TV, because they just settled that case, apparently. And uh, the kids are, you know, they swear to each other that at some point they're going to go and, and find D.B. Cooper's money. So, you know, flash forward, you see, like, maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 years in the, in the future, um, one of the friends dies. Uh, he he like led this like really amazing life and the other three friends are at his funeral and they're like man you know he had just the the perfect life um you know we're so sad that he's gone uh but they find out that he, he kept all of the db cooper stuff that they had gathered up when they were little kids and so they decide that they're going to go out and they're going to actually find db cooper's money um in honor of their friend so uh the the actors are the three main guys are Seth Green, um, the guy that plays Shaggy in Scooby-Doo, I forget his name, and um, Dax something, uh, he's married to Kristen Bell. Um, so you have those three guys, and they start off, um, you know, the, the trip starts off pretty well. They have this canoe packed with all their stuff. Um, you, you kind of realize that they're not really prepared for this, like... Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're city guys, they're, they're not, they've never been on a camping trip before, they, like, christen the boat with a beer bottle and, like, shatter glass all over the shore, so, like, the guys that are, you know, th you know, renting them the canoe are like, alright, great, thanks for that, you know, good luck, um, they run into a sheriff that gives them a hard time, you know, they, they pretty much just start off on the wrong foot, so, they, uh, get down the river, they go off into camp, and, um, they decide that, you know, they want fish for dinner or something. Uh, so the guy is, you know, fishing with a flashlight and a bear, like grizzly bear comes up. And I mean, I, I think that it's common knowledge, but I, I thought that it was common knowledge that you don't run and you just kind of like lay down and you get down small into like the fetal position. So they start running and it's running after them. And then finally, like it, it catches up to the, to the smaller guy, Seth Green. So he huddles up in the fetal position. The bear picks him up because it thinks that it's his, it's their cub. Uh, okay. And drags him off. Uh, big, brings in a dead, like, rabbit. Throws it in front of him and, like, wants him to eat it or something. So Seth Green is, like, trying to eat this, like, dead rabbit. Um, they finally escape. They run up a tree. And the bear comes back and just destroys their camp. Eats all of their food. Destroys all their stuff ends up destroying the map. So the next day, they're, they're trying to get out of there. They get in the canoe. Um, the map's all ripped up, so they don't see that there's a split in the river. They miss the split. They go down the wrong section. They end up in rapids. They're going down these rapids in a canoe, which is horrible. Um, end up, like, turning over the canoe, losing all their stuff. You know, they finally gather themselves up, and then at the very end, there's, like, a 100-foot waterfall where they have to, like, jump off the canoe, they, they fly through the air, land perfectly unharmed at the base of the waterfall, and swim to the shore. Okay, fine. Lucky, lucky break. I understand. So, uh, Seth Green's got a fanny pack, he's got a few things in there, um, Shaggy's got a, a compass, you know, okay, it's like a cereal box compass, so we'll see if that works out well. Um, so, you know, they, they say, you know, look, we'd like to go back, but there's no way we're going to get back up. So let's just keep looking around. Let's, let's try to find something. They lost the map now. Map's gone. And so they start walking through, they, they're walking through the woods. There's like literally nothing around for miles. 
they come upon this camp of these two hillbillies that they had seen earlier throwing dynamite into the river to catch fish. So these hillbillies are cleaning the fish, and the three guys walk down, and at first they were like, oh man, that, that kind of sucks that it's the hillbillies, like that, that's unfortunate that we have to try to ask them for help, but all right. And so they realize as they're looking around, you know, they kind of hide in the barn for a little bit, just c trying to feel out, and they realize that these hillbillies are pot farmers. They have, like, this enormous barn just full of weed. They they knock something over. The hillbillies hear them. The two dogs come running out. So they're chasing them all through this, this forest. They finally get to this huge field where they're growing all of the pot. Uh, the security measures that these hillbillies had set up were flares that shoot up into the air. Well, the beautiful thing about flares is that what goes up must come down. So these red hot flares come down onto this enormous field of weed and set it on fire. So everyone's getting stoned as they're running away from, from each other. Um, the dogs get stoned, hillbillies have the mask over their mouth or something so they don't get stoned, but they're consistently like shooting at these guys the entire time. I don't know how no one got shot. Uh, they end up jumping into the, like, the small pond and breathing through, like, pussy willow, uh, like, tubes, um, like, stems, I guess. Um, so, you know, they, they veer off in one direction, hillbillies go in another direction. So now they're completely soaking wet. They come upon, uh, this huge tree. There are two, like, hippies in it, two girl hippies. Um, they take off all their clothes, they warm them up, they give them food and stuff, and so finally they say, oh yeah, so we have this radio, you can radio into town, and they'll come get you. So they, you know, they try to get the town over the radio, well, the hillbillies have a radio on their ATVs that they've got, riding around trying to find these three guys, because they want to kill them, because they now know about this pot farm, and... So they pick it up and they're like, oh yeah, like, where are you at, by the way? Okay, we're coming for you. They show up, they start, they somehow, some for some reason have a chainsaw. So they start uh, cutting down this enormous tree. The chainsaw doesn't even cover maybe a quarter of the entire diameter of this tree. I don't know how the hell they're going to try to cut this down. But they're using this chainsaw. And so the hippies <laughs> shit in bags. So they have this huge, like, collection of shit in bags. They start throwing the bags down to the two hillbillies. Now the hillbillies are covered in shit. They're getting pissed. They they zip line down the back of the tree, come around, steal one of the ATVs. They're driving off into whatever. They're completely naked still because all their clothes are still with the hippies. So these three guys literally just have underwear on. They have nothing else out and Seth Green's fanny pack. Um, they are riding through the forest. Uh... The shit-covered hillbillies are still following them, and they come upon the river. Again, th uh, this river's coming up, like, a lot. Like, this is a huge river. I don't know if they're on an island or something, but they just keep coming on this river. So, again, it's like a 100-foot drop, and they jump off the ATV, and they all land in the water, pretty much on their backs, from what it looks like, and everyone's perfectly fine. Wind's not even knocked out of them. All right. Again, lucky break. <laughs> perfectly fine. Sure. And so now they're, they're out of the water. They have no clothes on, still walking through the, the woods. They don't have any scratches on them. They're not even that dirty. Uh, they're not complaining about bugs. They're not complaining about anything. Okay, maybe it was too much. Maybe they didn't want to, you know, overburden the viewer with too many details. Fine, no problem. So then Seth Green finally says, look, <laughs> enough of this. I'm done. I'm just going to sit here in the cave and wait for someone to get me. I don't know how that's going to work out. No one knows where you are. The only people that you radioed are the hillbillies, and they're trying to kill you. No one knows that you're out here. No one even knows that you're in a cave. They can't see you from an aerial view, so a helicopter's not going to work. That's not a very good, a good idea. All right, whatever. So he's sitting in the cave. The other two guys are like, all right, fine. We'll just we'll sit in the cave. You know, it couldn't get much worse. Starts pouring. Absolutely, like, horrible thunderstorm, like, horrendous downpour. Great. So it did get worse. Amazing. So they're in this cave, and they're like, look, we got to keep warm. We're going to die of hypothermia. Let's all cuddle up. So now all three of them are all cuddled up, and 
they're found by this mountain man who ends up being Burt Reynolds. It's an amazing cameo. I always love when he comes in like that. And uh, he's, he's pretty much just like all fur, head to toe. He's got this like double barrel shotgun. And he's like, you know, whatever you perverts are doing, get up, follow me. I don't know what he was doing walking around in this torrentious downpour. Like, you know, what, he's just walking around just for the, his health. I, I don't understand. Didn't really make sense that he was out and about, like, walking around. It ha happens upon these guys, but okay, whatever. So, takes him to the cabin. Somehow, the hillbillies find him in his cabin. They just start shooting everything. They just start shooting the cabin up. Burt Reynolds comes out. Guns firing. Whatever. Holds off the, the hillbillies. Blows up their ATV. Three guys are running off again. Uh, they they stumble upon the this huge, like, mine shaft. Fall down in the mine shaft. Again, no broken bones, not even a sprained ankle. Perfectly fine. All right, that's okay. Really lucky, though. Really, really lucky break. And they're looking around this mine shaft, and they find this skeleton. And there's a suitcase, and there's a few things, and they figure out this D.B. Cooper. They found him. Fantastic. Movie's over. Not yet. And so they're looking through this stuff, and they see that all the money's gone. All the money of D.B. Cooper's gone. And he had burnt it to stay alive because he'd probably broken his leg falling down the mine shaft, as people should, falling down a mine shaft. And he couldn't get out, so he burnt all the money to stay warm, to stay alive for a few more minutes. And they take this as some existential, you know, I don't know, message or something like, you know, be happy with what you have, and money doesn't solve all your problems and whatever. Okay. So they find this exit to the mine shaft. It's only big enough for Seth Green to, to walk through because he's like 4'11 or something next to Shaggy and whatever his name is. And so he may, he's starting to make his way out. The hillbillies find them again because they start singing to ease Seth Green because he's afraid of dark, cramped spaces, which obviously is perfect scenario for the mine shaft. Um, and so the, he finally makes it out. He, you know, clubs... The hillbillies, they fall in. Everyone's doing a tussle thing in the mine shaft. The sheriff shows up. Everyone's so happy. Oh my God, sheriff, you're here. Look, these two hillbillies are trying to kill us. It ends up the hillbillies are working for the sheriff. Who would have thought this asshole sheriff is making all this money on the weed? I don't know why he has to be a sheriff. Maybe just to cut the system. Who knows? So there's like this dialogue and then people are talking uh, Seth Green finds a grenade that happened to be one of the hillbillies. So Shaggy pulls out the, the, the pin of the grenade and he's like, look, you know, you guys let us go and I won't blow us all up. Perfect. And so that doesn't really work. There's a whole another tussle. Uh, they end up throwing the grenade. Uh, it, it, um, blows up underneath this tree. The tree falls, kills the sheriff and both, or not kills, but just like, I don't know, hits, knocks out the sheriff and both the hillbillies. Um, all right, that lucky, again, very lucky shot that, that this tree would fall in the exact direction that is needed and at the exact distance, in fact, to, to knock out both hillbillies and the sheriff. Isn't that fantastic? So they, they get, you know, this award and something, they bring him back into town and there's this huge drug bust and, you know, they're, they're applauded and whatever. Very end of the movie, Burt Reynolds shows up again. He's, you know, he's all dressed up in normal clothes, he's got a big bag on his back, and he tells the guys, he's like, hey, you know, thanks very much for, for everything you did. I don't know what they did. They just basically took his clothes and had his cottage shot up. All right. And he says, look, I'm going to go, you know, but DB would have wanted you guys to have this. And he hands them a bag, and it just it has DB Cooper's parachute in it, which is probably worth something. I mean, it's a big story. You could probably sell it for, I don't know, I don't know, hundred dollars, thousand dollars. I don't know. I'm not Antiques Roadshow. We'll see. And so Burt Bert Reynolds walks off, and they're looking through the bag, and they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! Like, there's like a hundred thousand dollars in here." And Shaggy is like, "Well, I don't need it. Like, I have a beautiful wife. My my life is fine." And Seth Green is like, "Well, I'm a doctor, and and I love myself, so I don't need it either." And the third guy is like, all right, I guess I have $100,000. Fantastic. And the very end of the movie, Shaggy goes back, and his wife and him, or his girlfriend and, and he were having problems. So he's like, I'm going to make everything better by buying you an engagement ring. Let's get married. And that's it. That's the end of the movie. Um, like I said, it was silly. It's one of those things where you just, you watch it when it's on. Um, it's not, you know, it's not anything special, but it's not horrible. It's definitely not the worst movie that I've seen. So, yeah. 
thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm sorry this was a bit, a little bit longer. I went into a little bit too much detail, but whatever. Um, so, as always, any comments, questions, discussions, leave it down below. Any movies that you want me to review, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to keep picking stuff that I want to watch and uh, talking about it.